let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, we are before the throne of mercies, seeking to learn from your word this day. Through our Christ and Savior, we pray. Amen. Brethren, today we are pondering about the blueprint for intercession. The blueprint for intercession. And our leading text is in Ezekiel chapter 22 and verses 30. The word of God says, I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land. So I would not destroy it, but I found none. Brethren, when it comes to intercession, it is a partnership as we have continued to share. God is calling us just like he called on his prophet Ezekiel to stand in the gap on behalf of his people and present the requests that were concerning that particular land and all the issues that were pressing this particular land. Brethren, when it comes to the blueprint for intercession, there are a few things, things that we can ponder about from that particular theme. One is that God, in that particular verse, said that I am looking for a man. Among us, the troubles that come through our lives, God looks for an individual and personal commitment from us as believers. He wants to stand, spend time, yet with many are asleep and are not aware of what is happening. And that gives a concern to God. And therefore he ponders and asks, I am looking for a man who would stand in the gap because God loves involving us in his plans and he looks for a man to stand in the gap. The second particular phase of the blueprint of intercession, God is saying, I am looking for a man among them. It is a blueprint whereby God is willing to take up the responsibility for whatever areas is affecting our lives, and he longs for personal calling from his people to pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and to take part in his redemptive works within the world. And therefore, it is an experience for us as believers to go and represent this particular group that God is looking and saying, among them, I am searching for one. The other point and the other phase of the blueprint for intercession is that God was looking for who would build up a wall. Wall, or in an Old Testament, the walls symbolized strength. Walls surrounded cities and kept them safe. When walls came down, the city was vulnerable. As intercessors, we build walls by repairing the broken walls of morality and righteousness. And God is calling us to stand for the righteousness and justice all around us. He is calling us to reconcile his people, encouraging forgiveness, enhancing unity, and advocating the quality, equity in our communities. He is also calling us to help the poor and the needy all around us. The other face is that God is saying through the blueprint for intercession that we stand before him. He is our creator, and thus like in the days of Abraham, God stood before Abraham and presented the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is also presenting so many cases that are around us within the communities. Brethren, it is us to take up the mantle and the responsibility and arise to the occasion. As the word of God says in Isaiah 60 from verse 1, that arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The other one is that in the blueprint for intercession, God is looking for a person who would stand in the gap. For the case of Jonah, who was sent to Nineveh, we can see that God has endured a responsibility, a special responsibility to him, so that he would stand in the gap, go speak reconciliation and forgiveness and repentance to these people. And even though at the first phase of his calling, he refused the same, God was still pegging upon his heart to go and stand in the gap on behalf of the people of Nineveh and present this case of these people. And therefore, he called upon repentance of this city and God heard their prayers. Brethren, the last and the final phase of the blueprint for intercession, 
that I may not destroy the land. You see, when God comes within our lives, he just gives us or he signals his concern upon our lives because in his plans, it is not to destroy the earth or the world or the people in it, but it is to take out all evils that are going on. And therefore, brethren, God is calling us that we have the authority and the power to change God's mind. Brethren, what a greater power. What a greater power and responsibility given upon our shoulders that intercession is God's will for us in our lives, that we may call upon him and change his mind concerning the things that he is painting about within his heart. Therefore, brethren, God is calling us to take this mantle, to take this responsibility and move forward because it is a privilege and power given to us let us unleash God's redemptive mercies and grace through intercession. May the Lord help you and I to take this mantle by its horns. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.